The great doors of the cathedral swung open on the morning of Sunday, April 28th, 1968. Outside, ready to enter the cavernous sanctuary, stood the Catholicos of all Armenians, and around him a crowd numbering in the thousands spilled over the cathedral plaza and onto the streets of Manhattan. Those who could see him kept their eyes riveted on Vaskin I as he stepped over the threshold and into history. The most arresting feature of the cathedral was the family resemblance it bore to the great monuments of Armenia's past, the distinctive holy places which survived throughout the homeland. In an act that combined elements of both piety and self-assertion, the Armenians of America had erected a piece of medieval Armenia in the most modern city in the world. Echoing and perpetuating the spirit of classical Armenian architecture was an intentional component of the cathedral's design. The architect, Walker Kane, had been captivated by the rugged, rough-hewn beauty of the churches he had seen in Armenia, especially the 7th century church of St. Hripsime, which he considered a masterpiece of strength and beauty. Cain took pains to mesh the cathedral into the rest of the diocesan complex, orienting it at right angles to Zare Suryan's dignified diocesan house and its adjacent cultural center. Even more impressive than the cathedral itself was its breathtaking interior. It was here that modern advances allowed the construction of a sanctuary space whose dimensions had only been hinted at by the medieval architects. Substituting steel for stone in the design of the cathedral arches, the architect could dispense with the need for support columns, resulting in an uninterrupted space as quiet and sublime as it was awe-inspiring. All this was backdrop to the most dramatic feature of the cathedral interior, its stained glass windows. Soaring 40 feet high, the windows designed by Yugoslavian artist Bogdan Gram seem to recapitulate the style of medieval Armenian manuscript art in glass and light. This was the structure that greeted the Catholicos and throngs of faithful Armenians on that April day. With the young bishop Torkom Manugian beside him, Catholicos Vasken consecrated the cathedral in the name of Saint Vartan, the heroic 5th century commander of Armenia's army, defender of the faith against an invading empire hostile to the religion of Christ. Fittingly for an institution built in the United States of America, the cathedral was named for a saint who gave his life in the cause of liberty. Catholicos Vasken's remarks during the consecration offer a touching insight into what he and many others must have been thinking on that great occasion. Under these magnificent vaults, he said, I see in you, dear faithful, the true image of a living church. Watching your faces, I am aware of the wave of sacred emotions filling your souls which have been rendered radiant by the light invisible. This is an admirable picture of spiritual grace, a rare moment of spiritual bliss, to which we are all witnesses. In the 45 years since its consecration, St. Vartan Cathedral has been our window onto the broader world, through which our community has made contact with sister churches and other faiths, with leaders in politics and diplomacy, with important figures in scholarship, business, and the arts.
The cathedral has also been the surrounding society's window onto the Armenian American community. Our accomplishments, our aspirations and our leading personalities. Under the guidance of two diocesan primates, Archbishop Torkom Manugyan and Archbishop Khajag Barsamyan, St. Vartan Cathedral has become a lively center, not only for Armenians, but for the entire city. And it has become something else as well, something almost unexpected, a place of pilgrimage, a symbol of hope, a testimony to what Armenians accomplished a mere 50 years after the darkest episode in our history. This, more than anything else, conveys the meaning of St. Vartan Cathedral. Like the cross of our Lord, it is a sign of victory. A victory shared by all Armenians, by all who ever dedicated their hearts to our nation's noblest institution, and to the God who delivered his people from the shadow of death to give them new life in a new land. <laughs>